I first want to say we are going to be very specific in which clips we are showing of this footage do in the attention to dispel misinformation circulating about this case and expose several key oversights from U.S. Capitol Police. Again, a warning to our viewers. This footage is disturbing to watch. The first piece of evidence released is this surveillance footage from U.S. Capitol Police cameras, cameras that were not being monitored at the time. The footage shows suspect David DePap entering the Pelosi property, case it for about a minute before coming back with two large backpacks you see here. Now within five minutes of trespassing the property, DePap is seen striking the glass window 16 times before physically entering the home. Court documents and testimony later revealed DePap made it upstairs into the bedroom where he threatened Mr. Pelosi and repeatedly asked, where's Nancy? Mr. Pelosi was in the bathroom when he was able to dial 911. Here's a clip of that phone call. Second. This is San Francisco Police. Do you need help? Oh, well, there's a gentleman uh, here just waiting for my wife to come back. Nancy Pelosi. Uh, he's just uh, waiting for her to come back. She's not going to be here for a day, so I guess we'll have to wait. Okay, do you need police, fire, or medical for anything? Uh, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, there, there's the, uh, um, is the Capitol Police around? No, this they, is San Francisco. They usually my wife. They're usually, here. They're usually here at the house protecting my wife. Uh, no, this is San Francisco Police. Yeah, that being a key moment in that phone call. Certainly you can hear how calm he is during this phone call. Um, and we learned in court that DePap was uh, apparently motioning to him to drop the phone down. Mm -hmm. So he was not only in a position where he was in the bathroom, but trying to comply with demands um, of David DePap. And uh, certainly just uh, chilling to, to hear this. Um, and the conversation itself went about for about three minutes. Mm -hmm. Here's how it continued. Friday, anyway, this, this gentleman says that uh, he thinks everything ought to, you know, he, he told me to put the phone down and uh, just do what he says. Okay? Okay, who, what's the gentleman's name? I don't know. Yeah. What's that? My name's David. Da the name is David. Okay, and who is David? I, I don't know. I, what's that? I'm a friend of theirs. Yeah, I, I, uh, he says he's a friend, but... But you, don't, but you don't know who he is? No, no ma'am. Now, DePap and Mr. Pelosi eventually made it downstairs. Meantime, two San Francisco police officers were en route to the home responding to a wellness check. And we learned in court one of those officers had to check on their phone to verify this was, in fact, the Pelosi residence. Here is what happened when officers got to the door. <laughs> Yeah, definitely don't want Hall up here. I definitely don't want Hall up here. Hello? Are you sure this one? Yeah. Fucking said. 2620, right? No, 2640. Oh, yeah, it literally said that. Hi. Uh, hey how you doing? How are you? What's going on, man? Everything's good. Hi. Drop the doing? hammer. Um, nope. Hey, 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 hey. What is Pardon going on right now? I'm not getting an answer on call. Now, in sensitivity to Paul Pelosi and the family, we did not want to show the moments that followed that clip, mm. but uh, Paul Pelosi is unconscious on the floor at that point as uh, police officers are wrestling with David DePap and arresting him. It really strikes you through the conversation with 911 and even when police were at the door how calm Paul Pelosi was yeah. and how well he was managing that threat in front of him until that sudden movement mm -hmm. to strike him. And subtly hinting to the 911 operator, too, that, yeah, there's a strange man in my home. No, I don't know who he is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, all of the, these, you know, piecing it together, certainly just uh, heart-wrenching for the family. And as we're taking this in, I mean, also remarkable how calm DePap is. Um, even saying his name to the folks that uh, Paul Pelosi was on the phone with 
when he was calling 911. Uh, as we're processing this video and everything that we're now learning about the case, there's so many questions still out there. One being, how did DePap get on the residence when the then Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, should have had security at her home? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Several key gross oversights here from the U.S. Capitol Police. First of all, not only were the cameras not being monitored at the time, second, we've since learned that the, the home didn't have the proper upgrades in place. So when that glass window was broken into, it could have alerted U.S. Capitol Police had those protections been in place, but that wasn't the case. And, and thirdly, uh, San Francisco Police Department did not have a formal agreement with U.S. Capitol Police that we know of, because we had made several records or We've asked the chief that in the first press conference, and uh, despite that not being in place, uh, on this is public record. This is the U.S. Capitol Police's department strategic plan that's going through 2025, and it specifically states here, and I'll show you one of the key objectives says formalize law enforcement partnerships through documented agreements that specify how joint cooperation will be handled. And on that point, I mean the SF. PD officers that were responding weren't even sure that that was the home of Nancy Pelosi. Right. You would they think that that would check. be something that they would have on record and know mm -hmm. to have a proper response mm -hmm. in case something like this happened. Exactly. No, a key detail there. So not only that, but another objective here talks about how it needs to invest and upgrade existing U.S. Capitol Police technology. So all of these are, are you know, evaluations that are taking place after the fact, but the U.S. Capitol Police Board, the U.S. Capitol Police Chief, all has the authority to make those determinations mm -hmm. well before this happened. So mm -hmm. several gross oversights that happened one after another. Yeah. And Steph, as it played out, of course, the horrible episode ended with the hammer strike, mm -hmm. but what were DePap's true intentions? Was there any evidence you dug up that indicates what he might have wanted to do afterwards? You know, we learned a lot in court in that preliminary hearing that was nearly three and a half hours long mm -hmm. that talked about, you know, all the preparation that took place. So uh, investigators found a backpack of DePaps left on the property there. Inside, he had hard drives. He had uh, a smaller hammer, crayons, underwear, uh, you know, specifically intending to the in lead investigator in San Francisco police saying that he planned to target other people directly after this attack. Those targets, as we've previously reported, are, include Governor Gavin Newsom, Hunter Biden, um, and a number of other people, including actor Tom Hanks. So mm -hmm. it was very deliberate, and he uh, showed no remorse in that initial interview with the lead investigator with the San Francisco Police Department saying this was a suicide mission. This was, you know, his calling. He was, you know, doing what he intended to do, and he felt like it was a deliberate uh, requirement um, and and it's, that was made very clear in a number of the interviews that have also been released. Mm. So chilling to see, but at the same time, you think it could have been so much worse had it not been for how Paul Pelosi handled it. Right. Exactly. Right. Steph, thank you. Thank you.